coming up on this episode. My personality is aggressive passive, and I think Courtney is more passive aggressive. This is the show where we get personal with today's fast growth founders about their game changing companies and the challenges they encountered on their path from founder to CEO. Welcome back to the show, my fellow founders around the world. I'm Todd Uterstadt, your guide on the trail from founder to CEO. On the show, in this episode, are two special guests that I've been following for a long time. Courtney Caldwell and Dr. Ty Caldwell. Now, Courtney and Ty founded Sheer Share, sometimes called the Hair b and in 2015, and they have been leading the company together ever since. Now, ShareShare is the first mobile app that connects salon and barbershop owners to stylists to fill their empty stations and suites by the day. With 13 on the team and growing, ShareShare is in over 550 cities and 11 countries, and they were the first Texas startup to win Google Demo Day, named TechCo Startup of the Year, and get this, Courtney is the 33rd African-American female to raise over one million in VC funding. I am so happy you guys are here. Welcome to the show. Hey, hey. <laughs> thank you so much for having us. Thank you for having us. This is going to be a super fun. Oh, uh, well, I think I told you before we start recording that, you know, I've been following you guys for a while and I, I feel like I've got, you know, I feel like I know you, even though we're just talking for the first time and you two are so amazing. That's why I want oh. all of our listeners to just hear more about your journey. So thanks for being here. Of course. Thank you for having us. So we usually kick things off, and as you know, we don't usually have co-founders on the show. It's usually the co-founder CEO. But Ty, you're the co-founder and CEO, and Courtney, you're the co-founder and COO, right? That's correct. But Ty, we both know that Courtney runs things, right? <laughs> you got it. <laughs> I just want to make sure we can set that aside, Courtney, to make sure. Such a smart man. You see why this works so well? Right answer. I pick, my, I pick my battles and it's a lot of them. <laughs> All right. So we usually talk about I'm sorry, I gotta stop being silly because I just I just really love the two of you. Anyway, so we usually talk about a mantra or a quote or something that has lit the way for us on this dark and lonely path. So is there something shared that the two of you usually look to and say to yourself, Oh, remember this? On those, on those bad days? Because uh, there's always bad days, right? Mm -hmm. Well, one of those things we like to share, and we always talk to a, each other about this, and it's, this goes into the company as well as, as our lives, uh, daily lives as well. We say we like to leave people and places and things better off than where we found them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that's something that we try to live by, you know, as our mantra, as we, as we be, uh, try to represent ourselves and, and show people by example. But I also have another quote that I, I truly love and it's a Denzel Washington quote. And I really believe in this one. He says, do what you have to do to do what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, that, oh, oh that's gonna, oh, you, you, right. you, you got me, that hits home. you got the tear ducts yeah. coming to my eyes right now. <laughs> I'm telling you, you know, and it's so funny to think about, you know, the mantra that we live by because people will look at us and say, you guys are married co-founders. Like, how do you even do it? And it's, it's, I guess easy, maybe if easy isn't the word, I can't think of another word, but it's easy for us to transition from building a family to building a company because we have that same undergirding. Like our son knows if you were to talk to him and he's a, by the way, a first year, football player and a cadet at the United States Air Force Academy. Woo! Thank you. We're so proud. Like we're beyond proud. God bless um, you. If you walked up to him randomly and just said, hey, what's what's the silver rule in your house? Because everybody knows the golden rule, but we call this the silver rule. He would immediately say, oh, you got to leave people, places and things better off than when you found them. Mm -hmm. And so it's so funny to have seen that transition into our work life together with our team members around the country talking about, you know, the same thing. Like, how do we better serve this community of stylists and owners? We constantly leave with every interaction, people, places, and things better off than when we found them. Hmm. I was just at the Air Force Academy with my son. He's checking it oh. out too. <laughs> so, oh my gosh. You have to let us know the next time you're in Colorado Springs. It's like a second for us. I will. I will. So you just uh, like touched the emotional string in, in me. Oh, wow. So, you know, um, I've heard you talk about your son, by the, for, by the way, too. For mm -hmm. And I know your family is very important together. And the two of yeah. you are just amazing together. And this, and this whole idea about family, I, I get the sense, kind of permeates 
your team. And the thing is, too, is that with hairstylists, I mean, um, I don't have much hair. See, you guys can see me. And so, <laughs> you have a good amount. <laughs> and so you know, I have a, a, a friend who <laughs> says that when she goes to her hairstylist, it's, 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 she calls it, um, I'm going to mispronounce it, hair, therapy. Like it's like <laughs> it's like therapy and hairstyling at the same time. It is. <laughs> it is. It is. Mm-hmm. It's a special relationship that oh, a, lot, yeah. a lot of people have. No, and, and people don't understand. I mean, there are research upon research upon research that talks about how going to your stylist, and it, it is in that sense of touch because they're literally touching our scalps, they're massaging our scalps, um, they're spending dedicated time with us. We help them, um, you know, sit in the chair when they get up, they feel like a million bucks. It's just like going to a psychologist. And I don't know about you, but I see my hairstylist more often than I see my physician. I see my hairstylist more often than I see my dentist. I see my hair. I mean, I, she's just a part of the, of really like my, my monthly budget. <laughs> I, I, I would definitely add that too. no matter how big social media gets. Mm-hmm. If you are a social person, you're able to help people and you're able to do a great artistic work and whatever you do in hair, skin and nails, cosmetology or barbering, your clientele is going to go out the roof mm-hmm. because people need that social touch. Uh, they need that physical yeah. touch. And they also need to be touched emotionally, whether they be happy, sad, or indifferent. I think most of the time people don't really think that. They think that, okay, well, I'm going to post this new haircut. Or I'm going to post this this makeup blog. Or I'm going to talk about this. And the, the customer is just going to come flourishing through. It's not like that. It's a real personal touch. So mm-hmm. hair and therapy is definitely therapy. When I was behind the chair, I'm telling you, I, I was... 20 was, years, right, Ty? Oh, trust 26. me. 26. 26. Yes. I was 26. so busy. I had I gave my clients away. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I, I, I love how the two of you also bring, obviously, your marriage, but also your backgrounds together to build this amazing company. And, and Ty, I, I want to I remind everyone that you did for 26 years. You ran your own salon, right? I ran my own salon for 26 years. I would teach. I also uh, did classes. I have my doctorate in professional barber and cosmetology. So I'm an instructor. I teach. uh, I built teams. I also help people about business from behind the chair. So not just about the artistry of the work, but also about the business and just having insurance, life insurance, understanding the business perspectives of having a bank account, taxes, and all the all the things about that. So, you know, one of the things that I try to share with people, there's always business from behind the chair and how you work that is going to be contingent upon how successful you're going to be, not just physically, not just mentally, but financially. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And Courtney, yeah. you bring experience from Oracle to this company. Mm-hmm. Yeah, never Boom. did I think that I would ever be an entrepreneur, um, honestly, Todd. And then to, to do this with my husband every day, I never could have imagined that. I always saw myself as, you know, go to business school, get your bachelor's, go back to business school, get your MBA, end up being, you know, head of marketing at some organization by, you know, the time you're 30. And I covered all of that on my list. And then when I hit all those goals, I looked up and said, oh my gosh, like, okay, now what's next? And little did I know that it would be, you know, just a few years from, you know, staying in corporate America for over two decades that I would be doing this with my husband, but I absolutely love it. But at Oracle, I thought I was going to retire there. I was leading our digital strategy and innovations group worldwide, had P&L across five continents. And that was the place where I just knew I could make a big difference. Even at a large enterprise global organization, such as Oracle, I could still see my thumbprint on the bottom line. And then one day my husband said, hey, we need to go do this. And I said, all right, let's do it. (laughs) Well, it's a magical combination, obviously. And so I know the two of you are also proud of saying, well, we're not really tech founders, right? Although, Mm -hmm. Courtney, obviously you understand tech working at Oracle. But I understand what you mean by that. But as you think about that moment in time when the Mm -hmm. two of you said, huh, you know, this whole thing about these chairs being empty. I think, Ty, you Mm -hmm. mentioned in one interview that – you were really solving your own problem with your technology oh, yeah. because you had open open chairs, right? Yeah, I think what people don't realize is that it doesn't matter how successful you are personally. If you're an entrepreneur, if you're a business, you are solving a community problem. You're solving an industry problem. So you always build your business to be expecting of growth. And so I built my business with some empty chairs and some empty suites expecting to grow and found out six to nine months later that the industry is starting to go through a shift. And 
that I had some empty suites and some empty stations. But one of the things that caught my eye is that, okay, while the industry is changing, what am I going to do? The businesses can still go, but I don't want to continue to have empty chairs. So, you know, just solving a problem that you're having. So one day the young lady came in wanting to rent a station. By the day, I did not think that that was something that I was going to do. Hmm. <laughs> I so laughed funny. at it. You Courtney laughed at it, Courtney? Oh my gosh. <laughs> he came home and told me this and I was like, okay, like why was she even called to ask that? Like who does that? No one's ever going to do that. Like why would she call us to ask? That I thought it was a little bit of a scam at first. Oh, interesting. <laughs> but Ty, you gave her a chance? Because I'm the risk taker. Ah, <laughs> we'll come back I'm to the, that. Yes. So that's, yeah. So I was like, <laughs> you know what? It's not making any money. Yeah. It's collecting spider webs. It's mm-hmm. collecting dust. Yeah. I would rather make something rather than nothing because my grandmother always told me zero to zero is zero. <laughs> and I would rather make something. So whether it's been a dollar or whatever. And so I just like gave it an opportunity. It was a great match made in heaven simply because she was a professional. She needed the accoutrements of what she needed as far as a professional space to work in. And plus she needed a place conducive for her clientele. And once we realized that that was good, she come back to me too. 